Hello, Dean from DeanHanna.com and uh, today I'm going off to meet um, architect Tom Greeford um, and we're going to meet him at a passive house that he's designed. Um, it's down near Reading somewhere. Um, so it's probably about half an hour drive um, from where I am, which is in Wantage. Um, so yeah, we have first time actually inside a passive house and uh, to be able to speak to the architects as well would be really, really nice. Um, so we can get um, a lot more detail um, about the design of the house and the ideas behind it and um, some of the challenges and hopefully get some ideas of our own and try and get a better understanding of uh, what we need to do um, and the things that we need to think about. So can drive there now and uh, hopefully have a look and it's quite chilly today so that's a good test to see just how warm and cozy inside um, the house um, will hopefully be so yeah see you there in a bit So it was a big, ugly metal water tower. It wasn't a sort of sexy water tower. Um, and it was such a big lump. I mean, it was about twice as high as the existing building. Um, and it, uh, because it, it sat within the boundaries of the village, I felt that there was, we, we, we bought it without planning permission, or there's no planning permission for the site to use it as yeah. residential. Right. And because of that, I thought that there was probably a reasonable chance of getting it, so it was kind of worth the risk. Yeah. Um, which it was. <laughs> um, and so we got planning permission fairly quickly, actually. We got planning permission with about eight months of okay. buying it. Yep. Um, and we did an initial consultation exercise with the neighbours. Okay. We spoke to them about the kind of some potential designs and things like that. Yeah. Um, and we basically presented two designs, one really modern yep. and one more, you know, I mean, still modern, but not flat roofed and kind sure. of that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the idea of this house, the cladding and the form is is just picking up on the, the vernacular of the timber clad barn. Yeah. Which is part of the historically part of the, of the local rural landscape. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so that's that kind of explains what it is and, 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 and that's why it's got quite a small site. But as you'll also see, and you can just get glimpses as you as we walk up to it. The, the landscape beyond is absolutely stunning, yeah. and um, but we didn't see that for the first year and a half because there was a massive, actually almost the first two years, there was a huge hedge which was as high as the house is now. Okay. It completely blocked out the landscape. Yeah. So you just came here and you saw this wall of kind of untended green. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it was only when earlier this year when we took the hedge down um, that we suddenly realised that. Well, we knew what was beyond because we'd seen it. We climbed to the top of the water tower, which was not something that anyone should ever do. Um, <laughs> and, and we knew it'd be amazing. That's why the house is orientated that way. Yeah. Um, okay. But but it really has made it. Okay, so cool. I'll take you take you in. All right. Shading system. Uh, so that's it. And I'm I'm completely in love with this this system. This, so this, so this comes down from just, yeah. I mean, well, I'll illustrate it when we get inside as well. Yeah. 
That's fantastic. Yeah, it's really, really good. Windows Ideal Combi, um, as I think we talked about when we met. Um, I, not the ideal, but, but not at all bad, given they were almost half the price. And um, flush, you know, the great thing you could do the flush floor. floor yeah, I like that. Yeah, we like the yeah which, is, which, really, which really does do something. Mm. And, and they're big as well. They are big, yeah. And yeah, they are big. I think actually. it's such an important detail. Um, um, are the ceilings slightly taller than normal? Uh, yes, they are, yeah. So they're yeah, 2.7. Okay. okay. And I'll talk a bit more about that when we go inside, but the eaves internally on the first floor are relatively low yeah. because we've used the pitch of the... Uh, yeah. We use the roof space yeah. for, for volume. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm quite... I'm, maybe it's because I'm tall. I'm quite a big fan of high ceilings. Yeah. Um, but 2.7, I don't think it's unreasonable. I mean, on lots of high-end houses, our clients ask for three meters, right. and even 3.5, which is obviously quite a lot. It is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It, it starts to get to a point where it's just wasted volume, yeah, surely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what's nice, we'll see when you get up to the first floor, is the is the bed is the um, is the, the the bedrooms, especially the children, well, the, the, the nominal children's bedrooms or national children's bedrooms, could easily have mezzanine beds yeah. or bunk beds, and we yeah. actually really use the volume up there. So we've just stepped inside the house and um, we're pleased to say it is absolutely totally warm in here. Uh, and this is with no occupancy or anything, nothing running to keep it warm. And it is freezing cold outside and we've stepped in and it's perfectly still as well. You can't hear the wind and really warm. So that's a good start. Definitely going to try and say a good start. Um, so the central staircase provides like, it's kind of the heart of our house really, isn't it? Um, and um, to me it was really crucial that the volume of the house is explained as soon as you walk in and the form of the house and the axis. So there's yeah. three axes in the house, there's the, the, the perpendicular axis and then two horizontal axes which, which, link, which link the, the, the all main spaces. And you notice then virtually, apart from the utility in the downstairs loo, there are no doors on the ground floor. Yeah. So it's completely... You can just feel how you can feel the warmth and how much warmth is generated by the sun, yeah. even on a freezing day, and how that's been. That's the, that's the brilliance of it, isn't it? It yeah. just traps that. And the the double, the triple glazing, the triple glazing just means so quiet. That's the thing that strikes me more than the the, the heat. Actually, is the silence. Yeah, you can't yeah. you can't hear that. It's the absolutely. The trees and stuff outside. Well, the motorway will be at thirty four. Yeah. Mm. So we did put in radiators, and and I wouldn't normally, um, because it was for sale on the open market, we felt, well, and the agents all felt unanimously that marketing to a normal, we, we didn't want to market, we don't want to market it just to people who are passive house yeah. 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 Marketing to, to normal people who don't really know much about it, but just to say, come live in a house with no radiators. Yeah. In England, yeah. it's, it's going to be a big thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, whilst doing a new house for people like you who kind of know about these things, yeah. you know, we could easily design a house, we could easily design with aviators, um, but here we did. Um, and actually, it has, I think, you know, if the house is empty over the winter, but I don't know, I just, I just think, well, there's a bit amount of heat that you're getting from the sun. Mm. Yeah. You know, it probably worked, probably no, we need to kind of. So that's the um, MVHR oh, yeah. outlet. So that's just provided. We'll go up, upstairs, we'll be able to put stand where there's a, there's a lower one that you can put your hand next to it. You can just feel the, 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 the sort of the, the gentle warm air being yeah. recirculated. Um, and so the idea of this room <coughs> was originally that there'd be a fireplace there. Um, and that could be that could be installed. You can get passive house fire fireplaces. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
but that's kind of you know there's TV, you know, wife TV and all that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. What do you reckon the temperature is in here at the moment? I think it should be. So I was in here last Saturday, um, and it felt similar. It was about twenty degrees. Yeah. And so we had somebody had a, a, a I forgot to get one. Someone for the open day, someone had a, a laser temperature measure. Yeah. And throughout the house, it was it varied between nineteen point six and twenty point eight degrees. Yeah. On, and that was everything: the window frames, the walls, yeah. the yeah. floor. Everything was this wonderful constant temperature. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because. Um, I think it's fair to say that I like the house warmer than you do, but sort of in here, I, I can sense that it's probably not as hot as sometimes we have our house, but that's just because we get the temperature variation. I think that consistency of temperature is probably just as important. And the fact there's no drafts and no cold spots. Yeah. So we, would, we live in, a, in an old house at the moment, so one half is the old bit, which is really cold and gets damp and stuff, and the new Part gets roasting hot if you've mm. got the heating on, and so there's no kind of balance between <laughs> the two. We're either too hot or too cold. But yeah. yeah, that strikes me immediately as well. Is this this consistent sort of temperature in here? I put my last last winter. I put the I live in the last house at the moment as well, um, and I put some water by the back door to see what it was like. And it was four degrees on the inside of the back door. Yeah. You know, just so cold. Oh, yeah. I just think, yeah. Well, we've got, you know, our, the old part of the house, the door in there, it's just got a bit of plywood, like maybe four mil thick. And that's it. That's it's all that's separating not, you really and the outside lot, world. Yeah. <laughs> and the big gaps underneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. You can see, you know, in this windy weather, I can, I've been sitting on the sofa in the sitting room and feel, when I hear the dust outside and then just feel a little draft coming. Yeah, you can see the cobwebs so. just yeah. fluttering in the wind. Yeah, definitely none of that here, yeah. I've got to say. And again, the floor with no floor heating is nice and warm. Yeah. It's actually a bit warmer upstairs because you, it's sandwiched between the two warm, warm spaces. Yeah. And if you did like, if you do like the house warmer, you know, you could easily have a simple underfloor heating, electric mat underfloor yeah. heating linked to your solar panels, yeah. which would provide more than enough yeah. warmth, or even you know, or even an air source, or some sort of you know. Yeah. Um, or, or an element in the MBHR, mm. yeah. which, is the, which is the other, which is the other easy one. So just learning a bit of warm air to help bring it up. Yeah. So you know, you know, they say you can easily maintain a temperature between sort of nineteen and twenty-one degrees, which is exactly what we are doing here, mm. yeah. but making it a bit warmer. Especially if you had a, if you had a wood burner. I don't know. Do you want to have a wood burner? Or... I'm not first I'm not at too all. Well. We've got one at the moment. We don't really use it so right. much. For me, it's all about the sort of low maintenance. I mean, yeah, yeah the, whatever requires the least amount of work not to keep it burner. going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, not a wood burner. So there's no sort of romantic aspect to it as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's something that just keeps doing its thing in the background and you never have to look at it again. Yeah. And from a, um, you know, you've, you've then got something else you've got to seal up and yeah, think about yeah, the airflow yeah, and stuff, exactly. haven't you? So. Yeah, it certainly, it certainly helps. It certainly does not have a positive effect on your, on your, um, um, on your, on your, your heat load and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Although it can provide, then also if you did have, if you can design it if you did have a wood burner, that would provide all the heat that house would need in the yeah. cold, cold days. And you yeah. could then have a, you know, if you ever needed to back it up, you'd like that for a, for a, for a few hours and the house would be so hot you'd be opening windows. Yeah. I mean, I think the other thing that lots of people say, well, the, the big misconception about passive house is the, um, is um, not being able to open windows and so on, which yeah. is just nonsense, yeah. you know. And I don't quite understand where that myth has come from, but loads of people say, yeah. oh, does that mean you can't open windows? Yeah. Not as such. Yeah. <laughs> just takes, you know, it takes a little bit of time to rebalance if you do have the whole house open. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, in the summer that's not going to really matter. Oh, actually, should, we, should I demonstrate the blinds? Oh yeah, absolutely. Ah, yeah. oh, that's what the button was for. I, was, yeah. I wasn't sure. Oh, getting good effects on the sun being down there, actually. And this can happen automatically. This can happen automatically. Okay. Which is just 21st century yeah. happening right in front of us, I think buildings that just sort of sort themselves out really. It's very yeah. nice and neat, isn't it? It is, it's really, I, 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 that's what I say, I really love, of all the 
external shading options I've seen, and you can get them in a multitude of colours. <laughs> I was going. I really wanted. If this had been my house, I think I would have gone for a for a, a kind of an array of different colours. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, you have, you know, because you've got quite a few windows. You have with the black facade, you could have a load of kind of really beautiful yeah. colours. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I bet you can get pictures on them as well, can't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you have your face coming down. <laughs> or, or images of I don't know, images of the Car Caribbean beach and yeah. you know mm. mountain views. Yeah. Uh -huh. What a great idea. Yeah, don't, we don't have pictures on the wall, we just have pictures on the blinds. Yeah, which we only see when, the, when, the, when they come down. Yeah. Yeah. The window is yeah, completely warm. That is really warm to touch, actually. Yeah. yeah. None of that, yeah. Cold, cold, cold. Yeah, none of that on your single, on your single glazing in a 200 year old house. And this yeah. is triple glazed, yeah. is it? Yeah. 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 And, you know, in talking of, I mean, going back to your comment about designing things, um, properly. You know, we've spent a lot of time thinking about the relationship of the, of the window sills, the window, you know, this has all been really, really carefully considered, mm -hmm. the walls, so the, you know, this has been designed, uh, so externally you, don't, you, you see that the, the window frame is in line with the cladding, mm -hmm. um, yeah. externally, but then, and I'll show you on another window how it works, but this window system really allows that to happen, so you, can't, you can actually close into the cladding, which allows you to enjoy the view more, mm -hmm. but then just, you know, everything, everything should be thought about right at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and some things you have to do as you go along, um, it's very difficult, so we had the, the, the MBHR didn't quite fit, fit in the timber frame as well as we'd hoped, yeah. this is, um, so we had to lower the ceiling here, but then actually that has, I think, really added something, so we, added, we lowered the ceiling to the top of the, of the door and window reveal here, mm -hmm. which made a really, really nice, neat little feature, uh, uh, and help um, delineate these little service, these yeah. little service areas, yeah. and, and accentuate the two main, the two main living spaces. Yeah. And then, obviously, as you walk down here, you have the this space again, mm. and you have this, you know, the, because the house is about the view. You know, this 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 access here is really, yeah. really important. Mm -hmm. Um, and then this was a, this to me was a surprise, um, and I know as an architect I should never be surprised by anything that happens. <laughs> but um, it was a surprise to me how well this little study space worked. I like um, it. And it was a really good. It was a slightly sort of wow. What are we going to do with that space? Didn't want a corridor. Yeah. Um, but actually, it, it, I could imagine sitting here working. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a good amount of space. You wouldn't like thinking just this kind of space for your office, you wouldn't think, but it actually doesn't feel, because it's open-ended, it doesn't feel all kind yeah. of claustrophobic or um, boxed in. And it doesn't feel, even though here you're suddenly in the kitchen, it doesn't feel like you're, you know, too, it, you know, it doesn't feel like you're actually in the kitchen when you're there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're, you're close enough to be out here, what's going on, but yeah. you're, you're in your own little space. Mm -hmm. It's nice. And so yes, yeah, so, and then obviously this is the kitchen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the kitchen and dining room. Uh, and as we just saw outside, it's kind of orientated towards the view. Yeah. These, uh, the high windows are here, here, because we, we didn't have a lot of, um, we didn't want to have a lot of fenestration on the north facade, so that's the north elevation. Yeah. Um, but again, it's nice to see some sky, and, and it does mm -hmm. relate, especially this one here, relates to the view down the house. Yeah. Back, back down there. Um, the kitchen, um, on a sort of more interior design point of view, the kitchen is actually just a handmade, it's actually just a very simple um, kitchen made by, made by builders. Um, and we just ordered the plywood, it's from a specialist plywood manufacturer. The um, handles are from Ikea. <laughs> and one of the good things about doing something for yourself is you can kind of slightly indulge your own. I've been trying to do an island for ages where it's actually lifted off the ground. Because yep. I think that sense of scale mm -hmm. and kind of space. Yep. Um, it is actually wired. So that's the intake for the MBHR. The, it's actually wired for a recirculating hood. Oh, okay. um, but we didn't put one in at the moment. Just it's so yep. the wires and fixings are there. Do you think it needs it? Or would it just, it would just be a style thing if you did it? I think you, you might use it. If you, cook, if you It depends who you are and the sort of cooking you do. I think if you did a lot of 
kind of greasy, smelly coffee. Yeah, okay. You might want because it will have a charcoal filter in it and yeah. recirculate it. Um, oh, I like this a lot. There's a lot of space and. Presumably down one of the legs, then you've got all the wiring for the. Yes, yeah, yeah. which is nice. Legs, yeah. Really nice. Tightly And that is the that is exactly the sort of thing I was, I was alluding to earlier. You, know, you thought about that, and um, if you hadn't, you'd have you know, you'd have to tuck it behind one of the legs, or it, and it wouldn't work. Oh, I think it's brilliant. I love it. I love details like that, and it doesn't have to be that you're saying it doesn't have to be expensive to do something like this. You just have to think about it early enough. Well, the kitchen, not including the appliances, the kitchen cost eight grand, which okay. is not mm -hmm. a lot for a decent looking kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then, so in total, with the appliances, it was about 11, okay. 12. Yeah. You know, which is really standard, this kind of really standard kitchen. So we've spoken about the possibility of having a pantry mm -hmm. just to. Because um, I definitely want to have a really clean kitchen um, where everything is, is hidden until you need it, which is why the idea of a pantry appeals. But then the pantry uses up a lot of space as a separate room. Mm -hmm. So I've been sort of pondering whether you can have you know, a wall of cupboards basically where you can draw back the whole front of the cupboard, maybe in like a Constantina door or something, mm -hmm. so you reveal everything as when you need it, and then you close it up when you're yeah. finished. Yeah. And that can have everything in it, you know, the fridge, freezer, dishwasher, shelving and stuff. Because one thing that frustrates me in our house, and I'm sure every house, is, is the way that things you need for whatever, whether you're cooking or whatever, you know, shelving like this is quite deep, and if you want something at the back, it's not easy really to get to. Yeah. And so um, it'd be better to have some sort of customised shelving system that you can hide away which just has everything you need stored in the right way, not just because that was convenient to make a cupboard like that, but because that's how it's easier for you to, to get to it. And it's a similar thing for the bedroom, you know, for your, show, your storage in the bedroom. Mm, reaching behind to try and find your, your socks. Yeah, yeah, if you want. Yeah. I mean, there's all these little things that go through, well, definitely go through my mind, not through what is, but... Let's look, let me show you the... Um, mm -hmm. The heart of the house, which is the NVHR unit. Uh -huh. so, there's a, so there's a there's a downstairs blue there, which isn't hugely exciting. It's just a downstairs blue. Yeah. Um, well, like the finishing there, actually, the, it's like a concrete. Uh, yeah, it's the same. It's the same. It's the same, it's the same as the worktops. Yes. Oh, I really like that. Yeah, mm. I really like. I'm really, we're really pleased with that. Mm. Someone's left the lid open. <laughs> um, at least they flashed. <laughs> yeah, at least they flashed, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, so utility room. So you, yeah, so utility room with all your stuff, but then critically, you can now, and you're in here, you can hear it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so. It's still not massively noisy. No, it's not, no, no, no. We've only had one, let's see, so it's a fan speed two, yeah. Okay. So actually, we could probably have it on fan speed one most of the time at the moment. Presumably, it re and reacts automatically to what it needs to do. Yes, it can do. I think you, it's, it's got three main settings. You can hear it now, it's slowing down a bit. Um, it's got three main settings. Um, one, fan speed, one is for basically for when there's hardly any occupation in the house. Okay. Uh, two is normal day to day use, and then yeah. three is if you're having a party. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's lots of people here, yeah. so you know, yeah. you really need a decent amount of air change. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not that noisy at all. No. It really doesn't. It's no, it's no noisier than well, it's probably less noisy than our fridge. <laughs> yeah. We've got a particularly noisy fridge. And sometimes it's just yeah. Well, and the, the central heating boiler is noisier yeah, than that when it's yeah, fired up. That's up in the attic here. You'll see. Oh, okay. And then, then that's where all the yeah. That's where all the good stuff yeah. heads off into the house. Yeah. So it's all about getting to the view again at the top of the stairs, and, and the view improves the. As you go up, mm. it really does. And so now from here you can just see on, you know, and I think things like this, are, this is part of the architecture of it, is, is coming to the top of, top of the stairs and, you know, whatever sort of day you're having, you see that view and it's not mm. going to certainly do any harm to your mood. No. <laughs>
I love the height of the ceiling as well. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. so that's got to be a good, what, seven or eight metres yeah, from the floor about, to the... Yeah, about eight metres <laughs> in the middle of the house. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely enough for a very good tall Christmas tree. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. 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 And then you say, yeah, then the children's bedrooms. Oh, it's in the little light, yeah, the windows are, are absolutely fine, actually, aren't they? Mm. It's quite, they're quite fun windows, yeah. like in fact. Yeah, yeah but, and stuff. yeah, but it's just meant to, it's add, to, it adds just a little bit of yeah, playfulness. Yeah, but a bit quirky. Yeah. Mm. And the windows, I mean, they're big windows as well, yeah. which I like. Um, I know that's not necessarily specific to a passive house, but um, it does seem that the passive houses that I've seen have sort of nice big glazing on them. They don't have piddly little kind of Well, I think, and it, you know, I think a lot of passive houses have, are still being designed to look kind of quite traditional yeah. and with, with little windows. And I think this is part of, you know, you're embracing a new way of building. Yeah. You know, with big windows and you know bright light rooms, you don't have to turn the lights on because all yeah, the light. Yeah. Out. So each window has its own manual override, yeah. Yeah. effectively. Yeah. Okay. Now, because it's on just on one, you can only just feel the the, the air coming out of that. Yeah. And so is the air coming out of that or going into yeah, that? Yeah, the air is coming out of that. Where's the air? Into oh no, maybe that is the intake on. So that is it. Yeah, no, that is an intake. Sorry, that is an intake. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, because it's much, it's much stronger. Yeah, I thought that was a bit like yeah, so that is the intake because it's the bathroom. Yeah. And this is the yeah. The, yeah, okay. So you can just feel the and you can feel also that it has been warm slightly. Yeah, because that's coming straight from outdoors, and it's just a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
as the world starts to get even crazier. And, and you can now buy batteries that store, there are lots of companies now that have battery products and you can store the electricity, you don't have to, doesn't it, that, that you generate. Yeah, yeah. Oh, lovely. See, yeah. And the ensuite is... Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. I was wondering. Very cool. It's always, it must have come on, it's obviously, it's obviously done, it's obviously gone down a little bit. Um, yeah, on switch shower room. Mm -hmm. There will one day be um, a shower screen there as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like the way it's hidden like that. Yeah, it's very, very cool. It's really Yeah. As you wake up in the morning being a bit confused. And just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's in one of these somewhere. <laughs> Where's the shower gone? <laughs> There's a nice simple finish to the cupboards, which you presumably is not it's massively expensive. Well. It's a yeah. spruce, spruce plywood. Yeah. Um, there's one company that basically makes this stuff called mm. Tin Tab, who also made the um, oak, this, the, the, the smoked oak. Yeah. The cupboard's downstairs. Okay. Um, and again, we just had these made. These are just very simple. Yeah. Um, melamine. Yeah. Um, um, units, which, which we had cut up. I mean, it's, it's all bespoke, but it really is not expensive. Yeah. 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 Um, Ikea handles. Had to be a little bit of Ikea somewhere. Uh -huh. yeah, no home was a home without. Yeah. A little bit of Ikea. Uh -huh. Ikea. Yeah, you know, I quite like to wake up in the morning, I think. And because obviously you've got your automatic blinds here. Uh -huh. And I you know, quite like to wake up in the morning and to look out of that. Don't yeah. And then obviously you can, just to give you a, a, a sense of the difference. Yeah, definitely here though. Yeah, it's a motorway from here. It's a motorway noise. Yeah, that's a nice touch. And sliding doors like this, mm. would you say they're an extravagance? No. Yes, they're fairly kind of standard, if you like. Yeah, yeah. I don't think, I don't think it's extravagant to have something like this in a, in a, okay. in a main bedroom. You know, sure, if, Every room does every room need it, but you know, yeah, okay, yeah, in, in pr pr principal rooms because, like, any like all, all things, you know, in in design, there should be a high, there needs to be a hierarchy of, of specification, and everything yeah, that relates to, to to what the, the use of the space are. If yeah. every room has the same windows, and there's no yeah. hierarchy, there's no yeah. sense of individuality, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I was saying was you see how actually the, the eaves are relatively low yeah. because you you don't need them to be mm. this is really high volume. So the house can fill, you know, if we have two point seven meter high eaves here as well, the house can fill absolutely enormous. But yeah. we can use the have the higher floor ceiling height downstairs whilst mm. this. Is there any special tricks structurally to uh, to achieve um, the roof like this without any kind of internal support? No, not really. No. I mean there's the, the this timber system is, you know, there are limitations to what it can do, but something like this is yeah. pretty straightforward. But, you know, we did actually have quite traditional doors, but then they're, they don't have, they're not one eight. Yeah. And simple, simple, simple door furniture and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, the floor was 30 pounds square meters, not expensive, but mm -hmm. it's a solid, solid ash. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not, I, I think you can have good, clean, Modern design and actually almost cheaper than okay. doing something with a kind okay. of frilly. Mm. <laughs> I always okay. just look at you know, the house from a practical point of view, and the more surfaces there are, then there's more cleaning and dust gathering devices around the house, and that's why I like clean <laughs> lines as much as possible. 
<laughs> which is nice and romantic, isn't it? Yeah, very romantic. But, uh, yeah. I, but as, a, as a modernist, I don't mind. I'm completely with you. Yeah. I, um, a house at the end of the day has got to be lived in, isn't it? And uh, you want it to, as much as possible, get out of the way and just let you live your life in the simplest way you can, mm. I think. And so, I'm, you know, I get quite excited about storage and things like that in the right places. Because like, surely there's nothing worse than you've got this nice, as it is at the moment, you've got this lovely pristine house. Yeah. So a family move in and they've just got loads of stuff and they just put it everywhere and it kind of ruins yeah. the whole vibe. So well, There's quite a lot of storage here, I think. Yeah. You know, wood yeah. Like that. We've got, there's, you know, there, there would be, I think there are, there are areas that I would build extra storage in. But you also have to kind of let people do their... Yes. Um, I think this is yeah. kind of... It's, it's an office area for some yeah. 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 storage. Yeah. And obviously, you think it's nice about the utility room, it's got lots of storage. And, yeah. You know, we built those cabinets in the, in the sitting room. And, yeah. yeah. But yeah, no, if it was my house, it would, it would probably have more stuff in it. <laughs> yeah, but like, so if you're going to have storage, so in like in the bedroom, it's all in one place, yeah, or in the yeah, kitchen. Yeah, exactly. Not just in so that if you're looking for things, you're not going to 10 different places trying to find something. It's like, we'll go to the storage area because that's where it will be. 